we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started this video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hi guys, Ranger Rob here for Easy Street. So welcome to the show. And uh, you can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio, on Spreaker, and several other platforms. Uh, what is Easy Street, by the way? Well, it's a half-hour show. Um, the radio show I do, so we turn this into an audio show. So some of you may be watching this on YouTube, and some may be listening to this on the radio. And Easy Street is actually designed to talk about anything I want to talk about. And uh, uh, I kind of like it and <laughs> because uh, I don't have to stick with one particular subject. And uh, uh, before I do get going, I want to thank you very much for listening to Easy Street. All the episodes of Easy Street are up on uh, Spreaker on Good Talk Radio, five days a week, and uh, thank you. Really do appreciate you guys hanging out there. So uh, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and uh, let's talk a little, because today is an unusual subject. My subject today is, uh, well, I'm going to take you, for those of you who are listening to audio, you can't tell, but I'm going to take you into my barn for a minute. And the reason I'm bringing you into the barn is to show you our new addition to our family, which is a bunch of baby birds, a bunch of baby chickens. In fact, these are Rhode Island Reds. And uh, they're thriving. They're doing great. They're, all, they're not even a week old. And uh, they're all perky, doing their thing kind of being cooperative. Uh, uh, yes, they're all the same kind of bird. They're, uh, Rhode Island Red is a, a, a kind of a brown d bird that makes brown eggs. And uh, the funny thing about brown eggs, when you crack them open, they look like every other egg. White egg, cream colored egg, uh, light brown, dark brown. You open them up and they all look like an egg. <laughs> it's amazing. And what I want to do is, my subject today is, why can't we all live like chickens? <laughs> I'm going to talk about other things too, but, you know, animals, like for example, let's see, here's Cinder. Cinder's my dog, a chocolate lab. And then over, and the other part is kind of hard to see here, is a German Shepherd. And uh, they're dogs. And my point is, this dog is a chocolate lab. Um, that dog is a German Shepherd. But they're just dogs. My dogs work together. They play together, they compete together, they accomplish some of the same things, and at the end of the day, they sleep together at the end of our bed, sometimes on the bed. Do you think these dogs care where they're from or what color they are? Nope, they just don't care. Not even in their uh, definition chickens. You can have Rhode Island Reds. You can have white chickens. You could have black chickens. You can have multicolored chickens. Little chickens and big chickens. And they all live together just fine. Are they a perfect society? No. You also have the males and females and they have different interests but not one of them care about what color each other are. They all work together, work against each other. They all work for the society. 
they all do the same jobs some scratch uh, and work the ground and others lay eggs sometimes the big uh, roosters will protect the uh, the, uh, the hens uh, some roosters may have uh, hens that are different colors than they are they don't care it's their hens they're just part of the family and they'll protect them all uh, a rooster will die for the other chickens just to protect them I've seen it um, the point to the whole thing is we are so wrapped up I don't know where humans get it all but we could learn a lot from nature you know all of us are saying well let's take care of our our globe let's take care of the uh, let's be eco-friendly let's take care of our animals why don't we learn from our animals there's amazing things that animals do that could teach us how to live together better and one thing is the society stuff this is all man-made stuff people made woman made <laughs> whatever you want to call it I know some of you PC po folks will just go nuts when they listen to me I'm old school it slips up be forgiving um, animals I mean I sit there and I watch my two dogs over in the distance they're always looking for stuff getting in trouble together um, they don't really have too many big spiffs if one wants to play more than the other one might be grumpy I really don't see them fight over food but I've seen animals do that where they just are protection but the they're trying to function they just want their food uh, when they get mad at another they don't care if it's the same breed dog or a different dog there's certain societal things that people could learn that hey there's certain things that irritate each other and so they get a respect for one another some will keep their distance some will learn to work side by side with a animal that's more aggressive and understand their feelings and understand uh, how to act chickens the same way um, the thing is they don't care about race they don't care about color they care about the community and they care about their personal needs food water uh, a nest being comfortable or home um, yeah I mean this take the time to look at birds go to the park and say how do all those pigeons stay together out fighting some pigeons are different colors and yet that doesn't seem to be an issue why is it an issue for us why is there so many people concerned about what color each other are we're all just like eggs when you crack them open they all look the same and in different species that have eggs you crack them open guess what it still looks the same it's the same thing just the outside shells different I don't know it's just been really frustrating to watch all this happen the thing is there's people that want this to happen and we need to start stepping up you know this they call us the silent majority and the silent majority does not like all this the problem is is yes that sounds great and all of us say hey I'm staying out of it but I'm gonna bring a little faith in there it says we need to step up we need to make our voices heard and show love what is love our faith so uh, our mission <laughs> yeah, I'm in a pile of wood here <laughs> our mission is to realize these things are coming we know what's going on if you're a Christian we know exactly what's happening it's written it's documented and it also says what we're supposed to be doing we're supposed to be showing the light and uh, also understand what's happening and teach people 
and all this is 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 all I can say is I am not a person that could quote any script. I have to depend on God to give me the right words to reach whoever's listening to me that I touch them somehow. So even though I don't roll off scripts out of my uh, scripture out of my lips and I don't word things in a really clever way, my mission is I'm putting my faith in God and, 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 there, and letting Him give me that one phrase, that one saying, my ten little chickens, mm -hmm. <laughs> my two gorgeous little dogs, um, and I'm going to touch somebody who's watching or listening to say, maybe, maybe I should find out what's going on. Uh, we're all up against a lot of stuff. And uh, I need to tell you, if you haven't paid attention, one is we got to learn to be grateful for what we have because it's going to get harder and harder. Be grateful for every time you can actually go to the grocery store and buy food. Be grateful if you have a roof over your head. Be grateful if you have transportation. Be grateful if you have family. Be grateful if you got great pets and animals. Be grateful you got the tools you need to do your what you need to do. Why be so grateful? Well, right now it's hard sometimes you can get real passive about this stuff. But it's coming. It's going to get harder. Government's going to get in our face. It's, we know that's happening. We know it's going to happen. Government's going to be in our face. Some of us are going to lose our freedoms. Some of us may lose our property. We're going to lose our jobs. Or we're going to be not making as much money as we used to. Or what money we do have won't go as far as it used to. Food is going to get food is going to get scarce. And those two little dogs there I keep talking about. Do you see any problems with the different colors? That one's brown, that one's black and blonde. Do you even think they care? Come on, learn from your animals. All they're interested in is being a dog. All chickens are interested in being is a chicken. And all humans should be worried about being a human. We are so capable of being more. We are capable of not having this race stuff. And my observation, and I'm sure it's different for all of you out there, uh, I came from a family that probably had a little bit of discrimination in their in their heads and then and my generation we were getting away from it I worked at an aerospace company we worked side by side with all shapes and colors and sexes and all that stuff we did fine and we got along great and we could tease each other about our differences I had some great people I worked with and did things outside of work that we're all different colors and we could tease each other about well if you're so darn white you're gonna burn in the sun and the other guy say I, I got it made I'm not gonna get a you know, we just make fun of our human differences in a positive way none of us were hurt we are all just enjoying one another's diversity but now because of what's going on and we're letting it happen that's where the silent majority needs to speak out and say stop because I'm finding myself going into a store and I'm walking up to a cashier and I notice there's a difference in the way they look never even thought about that before never considered that before but now with the news and all the stuff I'm still gonna say it all lives matter including dogs and chickens and goats and pigs and horses all of it, all of it is important 
that we learn this, to be side by side to work towards our community to be better. So be a chicken. Not this scaredy cat chicken kind of thing. But what can you learn from chickens? One of the things my chickens are going to want is over here. I'm building a beautiful home for them. And they'll live in harmony with each other. Doing what they do. Being chickens. Humans. Let's be human. Let's be people. People. The inclusive word people. The word people doesn't say white, black, Hispanic, Indian. No, people. Community. Yes, there's going to be that over-aggressive rooster. We just deal with it. There's going to be that hen that just never lays eggs but always squawks. We deal with it. Is it because of their color? <laughs> no. It's because they're just chickens. Same with people. There's going to be people that are loud and quiet, old and young. We did brace it. Live to learn with it. Understand what their purposes are. But yeah, it's really sad because I've actually thought, I thought, society, when I was younger, was going the right direction. And now, I see this reversal going on, but I see why it's happening. It's actually, people want this to be this way. The silent majority, you and I, need to do like, I'm doing what I can with my part here. I have some voice, I have a radio station, I have uh, some means of supporting my faith, helping other people, reaching out. You need to do that too now. No more just sitting back and watching this happen. I'm not talking about or being a rebel. I'm not talking about being a militia. I'm talking about reaching out to your family. Reaching out to your friends. One person at a time and teach them love. Teach them gratitude. Teach them to love one another, to be forgiving, to not look at race and color, to look at people as people, dogs as dogs, no matter what size, what color. They're just dogs. They just want to live and do what dogs do. Chickens, they just want to live and eat and have water, do what chickens do, and they don't have time for this, diver this division. And all animals throughout history have always been that way. We could learn a lot from our sheep, from our horses, from our dogs, our cats. They know how to live in harmony, even with diversity. Now, I'm not talking about um, inclusiveness. Um, that's a word that's actually being used, I think, poorly and causing uh, animals even have step-by-step -step rankings in a way as far as they are as a society. So all of them can't be equal. A rooster has a job to do. A hen has a job to do. Babies have a job to do. But they, a, a baby rooster can't be inclusive with a big rooster to help protect the the family. Inclusiveness can be misused. Diversity is wonderful. 
And it's a shame we're losing that. I don't know how anybody could actually go through life saying one particular color or people is better than the other or worse than the other or one's trying to suppress the other. A silent, the silent majority, us, we can fix all this. It's not too late. But we need to step up. Whether you have like a radio show like I have on Easy Street here or whether you have just some friends you meet with, some family that could use some guidance, maybe work on some stuff together to learn more about your faith. <laughs> this particular dog says, I've had enough. I'm an older dog. I need to take a break. Where the other young one has got to go chase butterflies. But what are they doing? They're being dogs. Does this dog hate that dog because she wants to do something else? No. This dog is like, well, that's what the young dog does. It's okay. Because we're dogs. And then she'll have her time where she'll be playful. And this one, the young one that's in the background, will say, I'm pooped. <laughs> And by the way, guys, I'm thinking about poop. As you know, in the beginning of the show, I talk about the Ranger Rob poopy bags. And uh, they're very inclusive. I don't care what color your dog is. They are great dog waste bags. How did I even come up with those things? Well, I used to travel a lot in RVing. And I noticed people uh, a lot of times didn't pick up after their dogs. And... Uh, also, when you got free bags at a park or something, you never know. Some of them are just terrible. And I really like dog waste bags with handles because, and I also wanted to create a, do a dog bag that was a little bigger and wider so you could turn it inside out and keep your hand away from the business and then turn it inside out and easily tie it off. That's when I created the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. And, uh, uh, they're super strong. They're waterproof. They're eco-friendly, which means they break down in landfills. Um, and yeah. Uh, and my poopy bag doesn't care what color uh, your dog is or size. <laughs> they're in, <laughs> they're diverse. <laughs> anyway, guys. Oh, by the way, the poopy bags come in handy for all kinds of stuff. Keep them in your back pocket because... I don't know how many times like you take a canopy off a truck and you got all these extra bolts and you got to put them somewhere. Hey, grab a poopy bag. Put your tools and little odds and ends from your, in your garage and poopy bags. They come in handy for cat litter uh, boxes. Um, gosh, we use Ranger Rob poopy bags for all kinds of things. So uh, grab a box at Amazon. They're very affordable. You'll love them. Once you start using them, you'll see why people keep reordering them. They're doing great. And I'm getting... People keep reordering them, which tells me they like them. They love them. And our dog bags were designed to make the job of picking up after your dog easier. Alright, enough about the poopy bags. <laughs> So, the last thing I think we're talking about is being grateful. I've said this before, the more that I've learned more about my faith, more that I've learned to pray, learn to be, understand that I give my life to the Creator. Not creation, the Creator. And uh, I talk to Him a lot. I did so this morning. Today is Saturday, and we know... In the Bible, today is actually Sabbath, not Sunday, today. So we lighten up, try not to do too much work. We might go shopping. We play with our dogs and enjoy what we've, what we've sown. And, uh, and we watch the little dogs chase butterflies. This is the Sabbath day. This is the day to admire what our Creator made for us. 
This is the day he rested. This is the day you should rest. I don't, we don't have a problem personally enjoy, doing things that we enjoy. And yes, we do do a little bit of like light work on a, on a Sabbath day. But uh, we keep in mind that the hard projects and stuff can wait one day. Let's admire what we've done. Like the new chicken pen. We got tons of work to do. And we might go shopping and get some materials or something, but we're not going to be really working on this stuff today. Today is a day of rest. Today is the day to admire what God has made us. Today is the day to look at these beautiful blue skies. Today is the day to look at the beautiful mountains we have in the background. Today is the day to play with our dogs and cats. Go admire our new little baby chickens. To just watch the sprinklers run in the in the grass. Today is that day. Today is the day to go for a walk. Today is the day to go to the park with your pet. Today is the day to celebrate our Creator and what He's made for us and all of these wonderful people of all colors. And look at what we've done as a society in the good parts. And understand what we need to work on to be better. This is the day to reflect. Really. You can do this. Take the time to learn this stuff. I am not Mr. Wisdom. I am not Mr. Scripture. I am not... A minister or a preacher I am an individual and God will give me the words I need to have to relay to you that he loves you and come embrace him and come learn your history it's all documented waiting for you to come see and then once you learn this history and all this guidance and understand more about the Creator Boy, does he have a wonderful gift for you. It's the best gift ever. And I talked about that gift last week. So guys, thank you. Thank you. I am grateful today that you listened to Easy Street. I am grateful that maybe one of you say, you know what? Maybe I will find out more. So please leave comments below and... and yay nay or good bad or indifferent be professional be kind be grateful and next week we'll look forward to talking with you again check us out on good talk radio don't forget to pick up some ranger rob poopy bags because it helps the channel helps the radio show and it's a good product wouldn't sell you a bad product this is ranger rob you're talking to anyway guys have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Have a wonderful weekend. And take the time to smell the roses. Be grateful. Thank God. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.